Okay, he cut this part out me and oh my god. Okay. Welcome. So this is a lesson about um organic chemistry. We're gonna discuss alkenes. Sorry, checking if it goes over the video. But anyways, welcome. Alkenes. It's our main topic for today. But before we go to alkenes, we have to first look on uh, how um, carbon compounds are structured. So we have here are some examples of the same compound in multiple ways. This, this is the same compound and as you can see I've colored them to show um, what carbon corresponds to what carbon for example this two carbons are the same these three carbons these three carbons are the same this corresponds to this carbon this carbon so on and so forth now let's discuss one of them at a time. this one is called the expanded structural formula okay it's expanded since you could see all bonds all the single bonds all the hydrogen bonds the carbon bonds carbon carbon bonds hydrogen hyd carbon bonds so on and so forth next this one this is called the condensed structural formula. Why? Because the carbon hydrogen bonds are condensed. Instead of showing the individual bonds here and here, you're showing the actual carbon carbon bonds. And finally, we have this thing which is known as the line structural formula or just simply the line formula in this setup um, each carbon is represented by a point or an intersection so let me just draw this one again let me just put in this frame so So this one is a carbon, 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 and this one is a carbon. Now, in the line structure formula, line formula, all the intersections are carbon, or all the points, and then it's assumed that all the hydrogens needed to fill up the carbon is present there. For example, this one is a metal, the CH3. For example, this is CH3. It fills it up right here. This fills up the hydrogens and so on and so forth. Now that we've discussed um, what these are, let us go to what alkenes are. Okay? So let me just arrange some stuff here, the background. Okay. So for this, um, for my lectures, um, I usually use uh, both the condensed and the line formula. So I've introduced this topic now so you could follow along with the rest. Now, what is an alkene? First, it's all about single bonds. There are no double bonds, triple bonds, so so. Actually, disregard that. Since carbon can form four bonds and it can bond to itself, by the way, the name of that property that carbon can bind to itself is called catenation just saying a bit of trivia catenation carbon can bond to itself it can bond to itself it could form four bonds in an alkane remember aim it's important it's only single bonds there's no double bond there's no triple bonds just pure single bonds and also this is a saturated 
hydrocarbon. Why? Saturated, meaning that you're, it's full. It's, it cannot take in anymore. As you can see in an alkene, all the possible hydrogen that you could cram in those carbons will be there. Unlike, for example, in a double bond, there you could have this bond representing carbon, but for single bonds, it's full, it's saturated of hydrogen. Now, generally, alkanes have low boiling and low melting points, and it increases as the number of carbon increases. Now we have like a, a general idea of what alkanes are. Let's discuss how to name alkanes. So, I'm just freeze this. Maybe. By now you know it's an alkane. Now, to, we need to first know some uh, prefixes. When you're pertaining to one carbon, say number of carbons, The prefix you're gonna use is this, okay? Sorry, I'm just looking at how it goes here. Anyways. Shoot, is that inverted? Oh my god. I don't want to repeat this over again. Anyways. Sorry for that experience that you might have sometimes goes wrong anyways number of carbons if it's one we use the prefix meth you have you're pretty two carbons it's called eth three carbons prop four carbons but five carbons is pent pent not bent pent with a p six is hex seven is hept eight is oct nine is non ten is deck i don't know if you can see that but it's deck dec this this thing is super 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 important to remember these four these four ones are the easy are the re things you really need to memorize. This remaining ones just simple pent hex hep of the sofa. Same with polygons. Pentagon, heptagon, hexagon, so on so forth. Now I'll give you time to memorize this. Just keep it keep this um, prefixes in mind. Now we're truly finally going to discuss how to name alkanes. Finally, for that one. Let's have this. I know I said I'm going to use condensed and structural, but it's as simple as this. We just expand it. Anyways, you remember those prefixes that we mentioned? This is where it comes into play. Notice we have two carbons. So that's automatically an F. And since this is only single bonds, we use the prefix aid in alkane. Three carbons. Just three carbons. That is propane. Propane. Five carbon, four carbons is butane, five carbons is pentane, so on and so forth. Now, 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 now. Let's discuss how to name um, branch alkanes. See, alkanes can have many forms. Actually, tons of forms. But the main ones are actually straight and branched. Now, straight carb um, alkanes 
um, they usually fall in this order. It's just one continuous chain. But branch could have many forms. For example, like this. You could see that there's not a single straight path, a single path to capture all the carbons or to go through all the carbons. This is what we call a branch alkane. So we're going to focus on naming branch alkanes because straight alkanes are super easy. Super easy. Now, how to name them? I'm just going to draw line structures. Um, this is a random example in my mind. This. We're out to find. First rule. Find the parent chain. So what is the parent chain? This is the longest possible path you could make. For example, what is the parent chain here? That's actually this. That's the parent chain. It's not this one. It's this one. See how many carbons are here? You have one, two, three, four, five, six. Yay. So we know for the fact that we have the parent chain is six carbon atoms long. That means it's already a hexane. So that the hexane. Now, if we have substituents, as we call in organic chemistry, these are the things that attach to the parent chain. Like this one, this is a substituent, a single carbon atom. We're gonna name where it lies. So we have here a numbering, so one, two, three, four, five, six. But we could easily number it this other way. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now which one do we pick? We pick the numbering in which the most substituents are placed with the lowest number. So we're gonna take this path. So just let's erase the other numbers so it's not that confusing. Five and six. Okay. So instead of one, two, three, four. We have one, two, three. So what is the name of this group? Well, we know that it's a, it has one carbon, so it's automatically a mess. When it's when this thing, when a thing or a substituent is a carbon atom, or just carbon, it's a methyl, or we call generally we call it alkyl groups. General term, alkyl groups. Instead of the complete four, uh, let me draw, draw this somewhere else. Um, where this one? Here. Instead of the complete four, hydrogen. So this is methane, right? It ha it has this extra bond that could link to other parts of a parent chain. So this. Previously, it was methane. It this becomes methyl, which is CH three, with a dash usually or something like this. That is a methyl group. Generally, they're called alkyl groups. So, when there's two carbons, it's called an ethyl group. Three carbons, it's called an propyl group. Four carbons, butyl group. Five carbons, pentyl group. So on and so forth. Um, since we're dealing with um, relatively small um, organic compounds, you would mostly see methyl, ethyl, and propyl. Because usually, when you get the butyl and pentyl, it's actually a part of the friendship, but who cares? Now we've determined that this is methyl. We know this thing is methyl. Now it's time to name. Finally, just put hexane here. We, we find the number on which, uh, we find the carbon number on which the substituent, in this case, the metal group is attached to. So, 1, 2, 3. So, it's attached on the third carbon. So, we name it 3, with a dash, methyl. 
Since there's no other substituents, he goes directly to the parent chain. So 3-methotexane. That is the name of this compound. So let me just draw the compound again. In case you want a screen tap. That is 3-methylhexane. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3. There's a methyl group. It's a 3-methylhexane. Let's have another example. Another simple one. One, two, so let's find the parent chain. It's actually this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's a heptane. Now we have this thing here attached. That is one, two carbons. So that is an ethyl group. In which number carbon it is? Uh, is it? Let's find out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Notice that in the same way it counts one, two, three, four. It still lands on four. So it's a 4-ethyl-heptane. Got it? I, I just know that I never used this side. Okay, let's have one more example. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Cha, cha, cha. Okay, let's find the parent chain. So which is the parent chain here? It's this one. Or it could be this one. It's okay. It's still the same. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's still a hexane. Now notice. Okay, let's say this is a carbon. Okay. Let's let let's try to name the lowest number. So where do you count? So it could be one, two, three, four, five, six. Or it could be one, two, three, four, five, six. Notice that the two things attached to our parent chain is both on 3 and 4. So, what numbering do we pick? Well, we look at it alphabetically. This is an ethyl group. This is a methyl group. Which comes first? Obviously, ethyl. So, this is the correct name we have numbering. Lowest. So, we have that. Let's name this. That is 3 ethyl 4 methyl hexane this compound this is the name 3 ethyl 4 methyl hexane now i'm approaching 20 17 minutes 17 minutes i don't know the first part of the video split uh, hopefully you forgive me for that hopefully let's have a bit of a complicated example now actually i have one more simple sample here let's try to name this what's the parent chain this one where do we number from? Actually, anyway, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. It's a parent chain. So this is 3 methyl, this is a methyl pentane. Why pentane? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 carbons. Okay. Here's a challenge for you. Try to name this structure. Let me just redraw this. So, let's try to name this. Which is the parent chain? You're done? Okay, let's try. Let's find the parent chain. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now, what is the parent chain? We could go for this parent chain. But honestly, this would form this weird thing here, which is honestly a bit of a complicated thing to name right now, since you don't know um there per I saw other stuff yet. But we'll get to there. For now, let's make this thing simple. Let's name it from here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Where do we number from? number from here why that was number so this is two carbon four carbon Wait, let me just one two three four five okay let's have this this is seven seven carbon so this is heptane 
Now, since there are two methyl groups, let's name them. Two, it's to name them, we do this. 2,5-dimethyl. 2,5 indicating where, where those methyl groups are. Here, this 2 and 5. Di to indicate there are two methyl groups. The, the, that's in the 2-carbon and the 5-carbon. 2,5-dimethyl. Let's erase this for a while. 1, 1, 2, 3. That is a 4. 4 propyl. Heptane. That is the final, the full name. 2,5-dimethyl, 4-propyl heptane. Don't forget this one. For for example, you have 2, 3, 4, trimethyl, and so on and so forth. It's a bit of a simple concept. Now, let's go. Um, alkanes can also form um, ring structures. These are called cycloalkanes. Okay. Usually they're only drawn by like simple shapes like this one. This is cyclohexane because one, two, three, four, five, six. That's a cyclohexane. Next. So try to name some of them. Pentagon indicates a cyclopentane. Square indicates a cyclobutane, so on and so forth. Now let's try naming cycloalkanes with attach or with substituents. Let's say we have this one. Simple compound. One, two, three, four. This is a methyl group. So this is one methyl cyclobutane. Now usually for me I drop the one since there's only one thing, but for standardize to standardize this is one methyl cyclobutane. But methyl cyclobutane works also. So a new compound, uh, this one. Bad at drawing. Ah, why? Why do I suck so bad at drawing? Anyways. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay. So where do we number from? We could start from anywhere, but we need the lowest number. So, ethyl before methyl. So one, two. That is one ethyl. 2-methyl, oops, 2-methyl, cyclohexane. Sorry, it's, if it's not on stage, I should move my thing. Cyclohexane. One more sample. Uh, this is an octagon if you're wondering. Let's name this so we could start from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Well, it looks like this is the shortest one. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is 1, 2, 5. Trimethyl cyclooctane. Cyclooctane. Okay, cyclooctane. So, if you want more sample problems, you can look online, you can look at Khan Academy, you can ask me um, for more work. So, yeah. That's basically it. One more thing to add, actually. This is a bit of a simple chaser. You've talked about methyl groups, ethyl groups, and so on. But, let's say we're asked to name this one. What do we name this? So the attach group. We call this alkyl halides. Alkyl because they're attachments and halides because they're from the halogen family. Chlorine. This is chlorine. So how do we name this? We treat it we treat them as attached um to the as attached groups. So this is one chloro ethane. 
Chloro is for chlorine. Fluoro is for fluorine. Iodo is for iodine. Bromo is for bromine. And so on and so forth. Um, for a bit of a trivia, um, there's new um, names for fluorine. Apparently, a fluorine attachment is now called a florido. A chlorine cube is chlorido. Just to follow iodo, but ah, who cares about that? We still follow fluoro, chloro, iodo, bromo. Okay, let's have some examples with this. So, let's have one, two. So, this is a propane. So, one, two, three. This is a two chloropropane. One, two. Other things. Oh, let's have. We have this here, which is a. Uh, uh, bro, sorry. <laughs> uh, butane. And it has bromine on two and three, car on carbon two and three. So this is two, three. Two, three. Dibromo. Butane. My lands, okay? So that's it. I'm approaching 26 minutes. And I leave you with one final challenge. Trying to name this. Got that? Next one. Try to name this. Got that? I leave the answers in the description. Thank you very much for watching.